Oh my gosh, hey everyone. Thanks so much for tuning back in to His Moses Unwavering. Um, I apologize for the long, um, I guess, break in the middle. A lot of things have happened, but God is good. And here we are back again. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, one thing that God has been speaking to my heart a lot recently is about the things that I have allowed to come out of my mouth. So today we're gonna to talk about the power of the tongue. And the key verse is going to be from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. And it reads, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Um, and I think that a lot of times, you know, sometimes we, we kind of get caught up in the heat of the moment. We say things we shouldn't say, whether it's, you know, because we're excited or because we're sad or because we're feeling kind of hopeless or um, maybe someone has said something negative to us and we just kind of repeat it because we think that's pretty much the only solution or the only way that our lives can go. Um, or even like in anger, but, um, we have to be very careful because the Bible makes it very clear that there's a lot of power that comes from the things that escape our tongue, that comes from the speech that we put forth. Um, you know, a lot of times pastors will talk about how just by the word of his mouth, God spoke the earth into existence, you know, animals and vegetation and water and everything. Um, and so it just shows that if God, you know, the whole universe just spoke and things came into being, then how much more the things that we speak, you know, those of us that have been made in the image of our God. So I just want us to talk about a few things in the way of just being very careful about the things that we speak. Um, one thing that God taught me in putting this study together is um, that the things that we eventually speak, the things that we eventually allow to escape our tongue really does speak powerfully to the kind of faith that we have. And keep in mind that, you know, when we say faith, the automatic assumption is the kind of faith that we're supposed to have in God, right? The faith that moves mountains, the faith that calls those things that are not as though they were in Romans chapter 4. But understand that Faith can actually pretend to something bad. You know, it can be something that we believe in, but we're believing uh, that something bad is going to happen by our faith because of the things that we have professed out loud. So I want us to um, look at what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verses 23 to 24. And Jesus, he's speaking to his disciples. Um, the word of God says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Um, so. Jesus here is, is saying, he's telling his disciples, you know, not to, you're basically encouraging them not to have doubt, you know, not to be afraid, but rather to speak in faith the things that they are trusting God for. You know, and Jesus says very plainly, you know, um, he will have whatever he says. But understand, again, this can also work in the negative. If you keep speaking negative things, um, I would say especially into your own life, but even into the lives of others because people, other people may not have enough faith to overcome negativity and bad things that are spoken into their lives. And I'll, I'll give an example of that later. But, you know, if you're speaking negative things into your life, that is what you will have. You know, I heard one pastor say it like this, you know, whatever you see, and he was also referring to faith, right? Whatever you see is what you get. But I'll, I also say whatever you say, as Jesus said, is what you get. So be very careful the things that you profess over your life because you are activating spirits, you're activating things, you're making things fall into place according to what your faith is, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Um, Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 
through 37, he's speaking to the teachers of the law in that day, right? And he's saying, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give accounts of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And that basically is explaining the latter half of Proverbs 18.21 where it says, And those who love it will eat its fruit, referring to the tongue. So it's understanding that. When you speak good things, godly things, into the lives of others, into your own life, you reap good fruit. But when you speak negative things, things that are deceitful, things that are ungodly, things that are wicked, things that are evil, um, things that are not true, into your life, into the lives of others, again, you reap bad fruit. And Jesus makes it very clear here that you will have to give an account for the things that you say, the things that you speak, right? Especially if they're things that are evil and things that are just not of God. Um, another, a few more verses that speak to this as well. Um, and I want us to think about how our thoughts relate to um, what is in our hearts and then what we eventually allow to leave our mouth. Um, in Proverbs Chapter 23, verse 7, the first part, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Right? And so remember that for something to leave your mind, it's not just random, right? Like there's been a thought process, you've been kind of ruminating over it, you've been thinking about it, you've been contemplating, um, you've been focusing on that thing, and then at a certain point, it leaves your mouth, it escapes your mouth, it's on your tongue, right? So the things that we speak, they're first formed as thoughts, right? Thoughts that we sit on, thoughts that now become rooted and seated, seated in our hearts. And God says of those thoughts, that basically makes up who we are. And then when we now speak it out loud, we give more power to those thoughts, right? Um, and then the author in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, keep your heart, right? So the first scripture was saying, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Now this scripture is saying, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So you have to guard your heart. You have to be careful the things that you are seeing, the things especially that you are hearing. Because in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the word of God says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, and again, it's, it's like you can have um, a faith that is believing for godly things, that's believing for the promises of God, but you can also have a faith that's believing for negative things. Um, when you're professing things that you know God has said to you are not true, when you're professing things that are very negative, you create a space where it's, where Otherwise, you would never have believed those things because you ruminate and you think about it and you allow other people to kind of contribute to that negativity. It gets to a place where now that untruth, that falsitivity becomes your truth. Um, I want to give you a couple of examples of this. So um, last week, I saw a patient in clinic and she just came for a routine visit. She just had, I mean, she had a few concerns, but mostly it was to, um, go over her labs and then, um, to, I think she had, like, she needed some refills of her medications. And it turns out that all of her labs were pretty much normal. I remember when I had, I had reviewed her labs before I saw her and I was thinking, wow, like, she's pretty healthy. Um, but then there was one lab um, just literally just one lab that was a little bit outside of normal and it happened to be um, part of her liver function and I told her yeah like this lab you know it's a little bit outside of the range of normal but nothing that you know we really need to be concerned about but she was so worried and so concerned and she told me you know my father died of liver cancer and my mom died of leukemia so leukemia is just a cancer of a certain type of blood cell and um, and she told me that a physician had said to her that because that was the case 
that um, she was either going to die of liver cancer or she was going to die of leukemia. And so when I told her that this one liver lab was abnormal, it just really, really concerned her. And I said to her, I said, don't confess that to yourself. Do not profess that over your life. That is not your portion. Like that, and I told her, I said, you are healthy. Your labs are really, really good. It's just this one lab that's a little bit outside of normal, but nothing to be concerned about, right? And I just said, don't speak things like that over your life. Don't say, because this happened to my father and because this happened to my mother, that is also my fate, you know? And it's funny because I said that and she was still worried, but there was there was this kind of like, oh, okay, like, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, I could see that she was reassured, even though she still wanted me to get some imaging of her liver, which was fine, whatever. But, you know, you could tell that there was some relief there. Like, oh, like, there's other choices. Like, I can just die at a good age and health. And I, I was like, wow. Um, so that's one example. Then another example um, is... Uh, personally, there was some people that had been saying some really negative things about me that had really been hurtful to me. Um, things that I had prayed about, that I had taken to God, and God, in His faithfulness, had shown me, Junior, don't worry about these things. It is, it's not true. These are lies. I got you right. This was something that God. Like, I can't even begin to explain to you how faithful he was in showing me that these things that had been spoken to me were not true and that he was God and that his word was final. But, you know, human nature, anyone who had ears to hear, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, you know, listen to what such and such said about me. Da -da 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 -da. And I would just go on and on and on and on and on. Right. And of course, you know, that that saying uh, uh misery loves company right yeah misery loves company i just wanted people to feel sorry for me you know i was feeling sorry for myself and i was like you know what y'all don't feel sorry for me too and so i would tell anyone that had ears oh my gosh let's do what such and such said but i noticed something i noticed that the more i said those things out loud even though i knew in my spirit even though god had confirmed to me like over and over that these things were not true i started to believe them I started to subconsciously believe the things that I was speaking out loud that I was hearing and it was dictating my faith, right? It was affecting my faith in God. It was like, well, what if what such and said is true? What if that does happen to me? Seriously, and it, it's it's crazy how that started to happen. And, you know, of course, going back to the scriptures that we just read, right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, the things that we speak is what we're hearing, is what is dictating our faith. And I saw firsthand that, wow, so basically someone else's untruth can now become my truth because I allow what that person is saying to seed in my heart and to escape my mouth. Even though it wasn't because I was I was saying, well, such and said, such and such said that, oh, that's gonna happen to you because of this and that. It, I wasn't saying it in that context, or I wasn't speaking the negativity back to myself. I was just speaking it out loud to other people to make them feel sorry for me, right? It's always feeling sorry for myself. But because I kept saying it over and over, what was on my tongue was what I was hearing was what was dictating my faith and so i was like you know what no god you have told me that this is not true i'm not gonna instead of speaking these things god i am going to speak your word your word will be on my tongue that is what i will hear and that is what will build up my faith and that has been it honestly so again it just really goes back to being very careful you know guarding our hearts and being careful about the about the thoughts that we see in our hearts and being careful that we don't allow those thoughts especially if they're negative to now escape our tongue to be heard to affect our faith right um i also want us to look at what james says in in, in chapter 3 verses 1 through 12 because i think it's it's easy to you know, okay, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. You gotta tame your tongue. Um, but I think that we also have to understand that yes, the tongue can be, you know, as as James says, a, a restless evil, full of deadly poison, and that no man can tame it. Um, but we also have to understand that there's nothing that we cannot do outside of the strength of Christ, right? So, you know, Philippians four 
verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of kind of reorganizing your thoughts and just always allowing the word of God to be what takes preeminence in your life, right? So for me, I was really honest with God because I'm not going to lie. There were some times when I would just get caught up in the heat of the moment and just blurb things and exaggerate and just say things that I shouldn't have said. And I felt that I was always like after the fact, right? I was always going back and be like, oh my gosh, God, I'm so sorry. And it's like, okay, Shane, right? How many times are you going to do this? How many times are you going to blurb things and say things you shouldn't have said, whether it's because you were just excited and you wanted to contribute to the, you know, the conversation or because you were angry or because you were depressed or sad or because someone said something crazy to you and now, you, now you're just repeating it. You're like, don't do that. And so I just asked the Holy Spirit, please help me to watch the things that I say. Because honestly, especially when I say things, well, of course when I say things that are godly and that, you know, the Holy Spirit's given me, right? But I would say even more so, I notice when I speak something negative, there's something inside of me that is stirred and is very tempted to believe that thing and to go in that way of negativity. And it's crazy how much, I mean, the, the word of God says it, but it, it's, it's crazy how much power you have in just the things that you say. So I asked the Holy Spirit to help me. And the Holy Spirit has been amazing because, you know, there's times when, you know, the conversation is getting heated. It's getting crazy. I and mean, I've had, you know, recently um, there was a patient's daughter who was literally yelling at me on the phone. And I could just feel myself getting heated like, oh, I'm about to, oh. And then at the end of the conversation, I was just like, I'm sorry, I know it's hard. And she hung up on me, but I was like, okay, but no, that's, that's all right, sure. You know? <laughs> it's just, it takes a lot of discipline. But like I said, um, there is nothing that you cannot do outside of the strength of Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so I would just encourage you, be mindful of the things that you're thinking. You know, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's really hard to be foul-mouthed, you know, praising God, but cursing men who are made in his image and doing all kinds of, you know, slandering people and gossiping when you're thinking about things that are true and noble and right and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy. It's, you know, if, if you just allow the Spirit of God to um, tame your tongue, but to start with taming your thoughts, guarding your heart, guarding what you allow to be those thoughts that become seated in your heart, you'll find that you won't be so quick to join in the negative speech and the negative rhetoric of those around you. Um, it's just, it takes discipline, but you will get there. Um, so again, be mindful of what you're thinking. You know, allow the Holy Spirit to walk with you and, and to show you how to be mindful of your thoughts and not allowing negative thoughts to seed in your heart. Um, be cautious of what you're saying to yourself. Be cautious of what you're saying to others. But I would say it starts with how you're able to treat yourself. If you're always degrading yourself and saying negative things at you know, the worst possible outcome, it does you no good. And it just allows the enemy to even you know, come in and, and pour in more negative things, right? Um, I, there was a time when, for the simplest things, right? Um, like say, maybe I was pouring a glass of milk and I, and I like maybe knocked over the cup and the milk spills, <clears throat> excuse me, all over the counter. Immediately, I would say out loud, Chunira, you're such a fail. Like you are such a fail. What is wrong with you? What you are, like that was, the, those are the words, Chunira, you are such a fail. And one day the Holy Spirit was like, Shane, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you saying that to yourself? You're a failure because you spilled some milk. You're a failure because you forgot your debit card at home. You're a failure because, you know, you accidentally bumped into that person. You're not a failure because of those things. You know, you are a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves you. You are the head and not the tail. Like, honestly, and it's funny because it was such an automatic thing that I didn't even noticed that it was such a, a quick reaction like it was such a, an, an innate part of me 
And one day, God was just like, you need to stop that nonsense. You are not a failure. Stop saying that about yourself. You know, so then it would kind of like spill over into maybe I didn't, um, maybe I missed a diagnosis on a patient or maybe I, maybe I should have prescribed a different medication. So it just really started, like it would really affect my confidence in other areas, right? And so I made a very conscious effort to stop saying that about myself. I was like, no, no, uh, no, I'm not a failure. People spill milk. People do things on accident and they still go on with life and they're still successful. I'm not a failure. So be very careful the things that you are saying to yourself, especially the things that you're saying to others. Always have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that attitude that you're going to build yourself up in Christ. You're going to build others up in Christ by the things that you say. Stay away from gossip. It does nobody no good, especially yourself. Don't gossip. Don't slander people. You know, don't do any of that. If if you're around people who gossip, just leave. Just leave, and it's like, oh, they're such an awesome person. They are so amazing. Like, just be like the complete outlier. Like, what do you know? Um, also, remember that the faith you profess can be for bad things, right? Like Jesus said, you know, whatever that person says, whatever you say is what you will have. Whatever you say is what you will have. Yes, the faith that we want to profess is the faith in God, the faith that we can do all things through Christ, the faith that moves mountains, the faith that calls those things that are not as though they were. But if you are calling negative things that are not as though they were, the negative things will come by the power that is in your tongue, as the Bible points out. So be careful. Speak faith or the things that are pertaining to the word of God, not to what you see. Oh gosh, you know, there's God, there's no way out of this. Don't say that. Don't talk to God about the problem. Talk to God about what you know he has done by faith and speak it out loud. Profess it out loud. Um, I think we already we like touched on this as well, but you know, like the scripture that says, you know, guard your heart, right? So um, just be careful of the things that you're letting in. If you have to separate yourself from naysayers, I've had to do that quite a bit in my life, do it. If people are saying things like, oh my gosh, if you don't, you know, do this by such and such age and, and you know good and well, you're well past that age, go and find other people that are walking in the right way or that are understanding the word of God in the right way, that are not putting any kind of timeline on God's timeline. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Um, and so I think that's pretty much everything. So I really hope that helps those are some things that god has taught me about just being very careful and being very cautious about what i'm saying what i'm professing um if you are if you know someone who is always kind of speaking negative things into their lives challenge them you know you do your part in speaking the word of god and speaking positivity um and just speaking like just goodness and blessing into their lives and challenge them to do the same. You know, all it took for my patient that I saw last week, I just said, I was just like, don't, don't speak that over your life. You're healthy. And I just, I just spoke good things to her. And you could see that there was, she was like, oh, okay. Oh, goodness. But so um, again, I hope that helps. And um, I will see you guys next time. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for being here in our presence for guiding this conversation, God, guiding this teaching. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that those that are listening, Father God, you give them the strength, Father God, the know-how, the confidence, Lord, to speak good, to speak blessing, to speak confidence, God, to speak the promises that your word professes over their lives, God, that they um, are free, they are able, they are liberated, God, to just walk in confidence and to know, God, that what they speak, God, good, blessing, um, just goodness, God, all that you have for them, what they speak by faith, God, they will have. I thank you, God, for helping them to think good thoughts and things that are admirable and lovely and excellent and praiseworthy. Um, things, God, that lifts you up and that exalts you, Father God, so that they're able to see, Lord, how much you desire and how much you have blessed them in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for strength. I thank you, God, for just all the good things that you have for them and that they walk confidently always in you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. All right, everyone. See you next time. Bye.